Does that look like a broken hand? Anything that I can't stand more than a scammer, then it's a liar. False allegations are running rampant throughout our society today, and this Jonathan Majors case is just another example. A few months back, I did a complete breakdown of the allegations against Jonathan Majors, as well as discuss the upcoming trial for domestic assault charges. And in that video, I demonstrated how his accuser, a woman by the name of Grace Jabbery, is essentially Amber Heard 2.0. She claims that Majors assaulted her to the extent of breaking a finger as well as lacerating an ear. She goes to the hospital, she files a police report. Majors gets dropped from his PR agency, brands distance themselves from him. He gets released from upcoming major movie roles and the internet hated him. There is no room to defend or deny anything that we are currently told about his actions. Like, not for nothing, a lot of us don't know this man. So far, there is conclusive evidence that supports that he is an abuser. This is a story we're going to be talking about for weeks, but it sounds like Jonathan Majors is a real-life villain. If you read the article, they're describing how there is visible injuries on this woman. But what the accusing heathen didn't realize is that there was a mountain of evidence against her. Ms. Jabari claims that Mr. Majors assaulted her in the car in Chinatown around 12 a.m. on March 25th. During that incident, Mr. Majors broke her finger and lacerated her ear. We have proof that this is a complete lie. The driver of the car saw and heard everything. And he will testify that Ms. Jabari attacked Mr. Majors in the car and Mr. Majors did not strike or hurt her whatsoever. Ever. And hours of security videos of Miss Jabari after she left the car prove that she did not suffer any injury in the car and certainly not at the hands of Mr. Majors. As the court will see below, after Mr. Majors ran away from Miss Jabari, who physically attacked him, she was perfectly fine and completely uninjured. In fact, the Thought Rocket went clubbing, got drunk, sent Mr. Majors angry text messages accusing him of infidelity, sent a self-deletion note to Mr. Majors, took a bunch of sleeping pills, and then 11 hours later, found alone in a locked bedroom, unconscious on the floor of a closet with a cut behind her ear and a broken finger. Upon waking in a state that caused the paramedics to request a psychological evaluation, Miss Jabbery had no idea why she was on the floor of the closet, why her finger hurt, or what happened to her ear. At no point between Mr. Majors running away from Miss Jabbery and Miss Jabari returning to the bedroom did she have these injuries. Remember before when she said that she had a broken finger? Well, this is security cam footage of her three hours after she claimed the incident took place. That's her right there. And that's her right hand being used effectively to go up the steps. And now there's even further evidence proving his innocence. That's her. No way. If you turned up the volume, you'd hear her say that she is the girlfriend of Jonathan Majors. The guy over here in the Texas Longhorn cap says, no way. Now, mind you, what she reported to police is that by this time of the night, her finger was already broken. So watch her use her right hand. Also, that her ear was already lacerated. Okay, pay attention to all of this. Let's go. Does that look like a broken hand? You're using your hand to tie your hair back and it doesn't look like there's anything injured about you. Now, now, mind you, she's crying. She seems distraught. It looks like her mannerisms to me look like she's been drinking, but it's come out later that she doesn't know these three people. She just met them 
that night. So they see a crying damsel in distress and they're trying to help her out. The girl is apparently trying to get her on her way. The guys are kind of just standing back and paying attention. But I also forgot to mention that her ear is not bleeding like she claimed that it was. If you broke your hand, you would not be holding your phone. That hand seems very active. Also take note that through her description of what's going on between her and Jonathan Major, she never makes any reference to any violence. We got it, we got it. I have a card here too, should I put it? Okay. All right, now Majors is entering the picture. Watch now. He looks at her and doesn't speak. Looks at, wait, we're going to get into this white knight simp right here, but wa let's watch that again. Let's watch the body language. Watch this. So he's walking by, yo. she's holding hands with this woman. You hear the guy say, yo, he's looking at her like, you piece of shit. And then she, walk, <laughs> she walks over to him and he moves his hand in a way to say that he is scared about her being violent on him. Let's keep it going. Bro. Look. <laughs> look, look, look. Dun, 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 dun. White Knight's sip here to save the goddamn day. You lucky you didn't put paws on him. This brother just got off of Creed 3 training. Of course, always a sucker to come and try to save the day. You idiot. Now, obviously, this newly surfaced footage is key evidence to get the case completely thrown out. And what's even more crazy is that it's being alleged that the prosecution left this evidence out, which would have exonerated Jonathan Majors. According to Insider, rather than flagging the video as state law evidence requires, prosecutors sat on this video for almost four months and then buried it in over two terabytes of discovery. Turnover only last month. Defense lawyer Priya Chandri said in a request that the case to be thrown out. Priya Chandri is Jonathan Major's main lawyer. And there's another video that was taken two hours later as she's at the after hour spot at the Moxie Hotel in New York where she seems to be dancing and using her hand effectively. Let's watch. Pay attention to the bottom right side of the screen. She's coming in the focus right here. Here's a zoom in. Now watch. She gets twirled around using that right hand. You can see it right there in plain view. Wow, she looks fine, huh? Now throughout all of this, Jonathan Majors is actually saying that Grace was the aggressor. And there's pictured evidence of what those injuries are, but I can't go over those on YouTube because it'll get us demonetized because of the gruesome nature of the injuries. But there we have it, folks. This should be an open and shut case. I don't even understand at this point why this is even going to trial. You have witness testimony from the Uber driver that drove both of them that saw her being violent and saw him not being violent. And you have a litany of video camera evidence, career threatening allegations from a liar. But just imagine for a quick second, if these allegations are made and all of this evidence is not in your favor, what do you do? How would you exonerate yourself? Which is why exposing these liars for the liars that they are is completely necessary because if not or if they're not held accountable for their actions then it's just going to keep on happening men and women alike should want liars exposed because continuing to have them lie does no value to actual victims of assault and should never be used as a tool to destroy a man's career. Grace, you should be utterly ashamed of yourself.
questions, comments, concerns, y'all already know what to do. Me and go to Toros and Reviews at gmail.com. Guys, write your comments down below of what you guys think regarding this case. And I want you guys to answer this. If and when he is found innocent or the charges are dropped, tell me guys what you think should happen to her. Because we all know that false allegations don't receive jail time, but what should happen? Let's try to get that conversation going. Until next time, YouTube. Peace. Peace.